<clears throat> and here we have another relatively short outcome, outcome 5 in the 2396 course. This is understanding the factors that affect the choice of sources of environmental technology. This one, again, it's not in the written exam. This, this is a question that will be part of the assignments, the big project, and it's just a, it's a consideration. It's just assessing your understanding on the presence of environmental technologies and when we should consider them, shouldn't consider them, what benefits there are with one or the other. Um, as you can see, it's it's one one little question uh, within that within that project. Um, the key thing really is to determine if the design that you're being offered to do has a suggestive benefit with environmental technologies. I mean, if if for example um, it says in the it says in the scenario, oh, it's very windy all the time here, or oh, we're right next to this stream of water, this body of water, which we can have. You know, if there's a clue that there's a need to consider environmental technologies or oh we have these huge acres of ground what could we put on those that will benefit you know have a little think about what what uh benefit you know what what uh restrictions there are to some and what benefits there are to others okay but this is broken down in um three little areas so state the factors that will determine the suitability of an alternative energy source so you know um uh, to make for something to be suitable, there has to be a you know uh, there has to be, if you let's say let's say solar uh, is solar suitable if the rooftop of the building is constantly in shade? Clearly not, you know. So th those those are the kind of things we're looking for. State the components used in environmental technologies which form part of the electrical separation. So this is just a bit of um, this is just saying okay. So you're going to do a, a PV. What 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 are components of the PV? Okay, well we're going to have we're going to have the panels. We're going to create the array. And we're going to have the inverter, you know. And then, you know, you're going to have a CHP. Oh, we're going to have to have a generator somewhere, you know. We're going to put that thing. So, you know, just understand that utilizing these environmental technologies will require stuff, and stuff has to go somewhere. All right. The third one: state the factors that contribute to reduce energy consumptions in a building. Now, bear in mind this is from an electrical perspective or an electrical design perspective, because because you can easily say, oh, you know, thermal barriers and thermal insulation and reinforce all this stuff to keep the energy. That's that's true. But what we're kind of thinking of here is the electrical perspective. How can electrical installations? benefit or help reduce energy consumption in the building so we're looking at management systems and things like that really there okay um so uh yeah five one state the factors that determine the suitability of an alternative energy source photovoltaic how much solar radiation is available is i mean i don't know how much you know about it you know but obviously up in the northern hemisphere we ideally would want some kind of south facing angle due to the fact that the sun rises and sets at that angle we need to try and have that orientation as best we can um, have you got the space I mean is it just on the roof how much you know we can, there are calculations we can do to quantify how much area can achieve how much power is this a standby supply a backup supply a temporary supply it depends on the circumstance but you may need a large area if you're going to achieve enough PV supply to actually have a standby source of energy uh, wind turbines, uh, amount of wind speed, regularity. Um, if you're near the shore or the coastline, probably quite often you'll have a, a lot of constant uh, wind speed, but if you, or a valley. Um, but if you're just on a bit of flat land that gets you know wind days now and then, you've got to consider efficiency with that. With a uh, combined heat and power, this is obviously uh, something that's getting more and more popular. The idea of having one generation source create electricity and this heat that is created right now is lost, lost energy. We, we need to encapsulate this energy and we need to harvest it and turn it into heating. So the idea would be, right, let's uh, let's put in a generation source. That's the thing with that. So you're going to have to have room for a generation source, cost of that space, you know, um, the ability to capture heat. Is the heating system up for debate with your design? Is the heating system um, an option? Uh, ground and air source pumps again similarly uh, if it's a ground source which is you know, much more effective there's obviously the the area have you got the ground to dig up to install it if it's not and it's going to be an air mounted going on the side of the building you may need some planning for that because you know they're big things to go on the side of a building so with micro hydro systems um, you've got to have a body of water you can't you can't you know you need to have some water to actually turn 
turn this system. Um, and you may need player permission for that. You can't just chuck one in a stream that's public. You know, if it's a public or a, a uh, an authority-owned thing, if it, you know, you need to consider permissions for that. So there are, you know, there are factors that will determine the suitability of all alternative energy sources. Uh, you may be able to use one, two, or three of them. You may just have one option. You may have none. Okay, but those are the considerations. Those are the things that would uh, be uh, be up for debate. And your scenario, your design, may throw some clues um, as to as to benefit. And it might then say, you know, which which environmental system would be of use. Look back to your design information. It would say there's a lot of something that will suggest a, a an environmental system would be of benefit. With five two. Uh, not a lot really to go on other than what's here. Uh, modules, inverters, control devices, generators, heat pumps. You know, do you understand some of the components part of these environmental systems? If you don't, do a bit of revising on that. You know, obviously a wind turbine. We can get some that mount on the roof. They're not going to achieve a lot of energy, but the ones that do achieve a lot of energy are the ones that, you know, um, you can see from miles away. So you need to, you know, understand the difference in these systems. Five three. The factors that contribute to reducing energy consumption in a building. Do remember this is obviously an electrical design, so we're going to say, well, we have to have an effective building management system, energy control systems. You know, it's all it's all about automation, isn't it? Um, that's it, really, from that perspective. Okay. Um, you could add a bit about th things like, you know, uh, you can you can consider. There was mention of this with the potential part eight, which they've now retracted. You can you can consider oversizing some cables to help reduce thermal losses, because we design cables to try to make them as small as we can from economical perspective, but that would mean that some of the energy is lost due to the cables being allowed to heat up towards seventy degree or ninety degree respectively. If we were to say right, let's put that cable one size bigger, which means it's not going to heat to seventy degree; it's only going to go to forty five degree. Now. We've spent a bit more money for the copper in the first place. That's a big negative, you know, it's a big bit, a big uh, negative balance there. But then over time, how much heat is lost due to the conductor reaching the optimal temperature? Um, those are things you could consider, but I'll be honest, you're scraping a little bit with that because that's where part eight kind of was going, and then people decided that was, mm, you know, not 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 for designers. Uh, but you know, we'll see. There is um, an IT guidance book on energy efficiency, um, which I have, and I have no clue where it is amongst all my other books, but it's a green one. Um, you could read that, but you will not be penalised for not having that information. You don't need to be um, some kind of um, ace energy efficiency uh, genius for this. It's just more of a awareness, a consideration. Remember, it's just one question, so can't be too hard, can it? Good.